Now, there's no use being too aggressive here because we don't know what's going to happen. Anyone who tells you they do is wrong. And you don't need to buy stock if you don't want to. Sometimes it really is better to sit on your hands and wait for lower prices. In fact, I was more interested in doing some selling this morning when the market dropped up much higher than the, week, than the weekend's futures indicated. Uh, but that's, uh, well, it didn't go up or stay much long enough. Had I decided, by the way, to lose my discipline, and to actually start buying stocks up, well, I would have lost a ton of money for the trust. I don't play like that. That's why I always say discipline trumps conviction. Now, I truly do believe that in the end, Putin will invade and the market will get hit again. But I have my levels, and I will be ready. You should do the same. If we don't hit those levels, then don't participate. Do not chase. Of course, there are some stocks that are entirely unaffected by Russia. For these, I have my Bristol-Myers theorem, something I drummed up at my old hedge fund where I used to crow, what does the crisis du jour have to do with the price-to-earnings ratio of Bristol-Myers? BMY being the quintessential example of a company that will make money no matter what goes wrong in the world. I think that healthcare stocks in general and pharma stocks in particular are terrific buys, provided, once again, you're being disciplined, waiting for good prices, not just buying every day like a fool. Now, you might ask, why didn't I take advantage of the earnings reports today, the positive one from Macy's, the not-so-positive one from Home Depot? The issue is simple. On a down day, I have no desire to pay up like you would have had to do with Macy's, a stock, by the way, that ultimately ended down a point in change, proving my, my discipline point. And when I see a stock like Home Depot down 9%, I have to believe that smart sellers are anticipating downgrades from Wall Street research analysts. Maybe tomorrow is the day. See, in the end, the favorite stocks I just mentioned didn't come down enough. So I took a pass. No harm, no foul when you do nothing. But you have to understand that you're now getting a chance to buy some high-quality stocks well below their 52-week highs and at some levels that are genuinely cheap, as you hear about some stocks tonight. But they could get even cheaper as the Ukraine situation unfolds. Sure, they're cheap for a reason, but that reason has nothing to do with their underlying business. Ukraine's just not that plugged into the global economy. Oh, by the way, for all their bluster, Russia isn't either. The bottom line. When you get a geopolitical induced sell-off, you have new rules. You have to be ready to do some buying unless you think the event in question could be cataclysmic. I don't think it will be. And if there's something that truly goes awry, or for heaven's sake, if there is a nuclear war. By the way, something that I feared every day of my life in the 1950s and 60s. I guarantee the last thing you'll be worried about is your portfolio. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.